HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in town. On this edition of HCAM News, we have highlights of the 95th Thanksgiving football game between Ashland and Hopkinton. The Board of Selectmen recognize some hardworking volunteers in town and HHS Theater performed Godspell and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. This past week, Hopkinton Town Hall closed for about 30 hours or so due to an electrical failure. The event caused town employees to operate out of the Hopkinton Public Library temporarily. Part of the statement from the town read, The Hopkinton Town Hall and Public Library remain closed at this time due to an electrical problem that occurred earlier in the day. A short in the power service lines from the utility pole to the town hall resulted in a surge of power and eventual loss of power within the building. During this event, a one inch heat pipe also burst as a result of the surge that traveled to a ground connector attached to the pipe as part of the electrical grounding system. This leak was quickly addressed and at this time it does not appear to have caused any water damage. At approximately 8.30 a.m. unusual sounds were heard in parts of Town Hall by staff and subsequently areas of the building lost electrical power. A leaking pipe was soon discovered in the basement as well. The fire alarm was activated and the building was evacuated. Police and fire resources were dispatched to the town hall, Hopkinton facilities and inspectional services shut down the power and water to the building within minutes of the event. Eversource responded, as well as the town's electrical contractor. The Board of Selectmen were advised and are monitoring this situation closely. Town Manager Norman Kumalu has stated, Serving Hopkinton residents is always our number one priority. We hope to restore full town hall services as soon as possible. I would like to thank residents for their understanding and patience through this difficult time, and especially for their generosity supporting and funding the infrastructure improvements at town hall, which has minimized the damage and made the recovery effort much more efficient. At this past Tuesday's meeting, the Board of Selectmen recognized some of the many hardworking volunteers in town. Here's a look. Thanks to Bob Levinson's wonderful program that he initiated, we have a host of wonderful vol volunteers to recognize, and the fact that there are so many of them does not diminish at all the uh, quality and the importance of each of their contributions. Well, we have a, uh, a nomination and an award for Heather Smith, who was nominated by Jennifer Andrews. So I'll set this aside and it'll be available in the uh, Board of Selectmen's office for Heather when she wants to pick it up. And Alec Levine was nominated by Ann Marcy. Ann, I see you here. Do you want to just say a word about Alec uh, and why you nominated him? Alec volunteers for a lot, you know. And uh, he does Special Olympics. He was one of the originators of the Hopkins and Youth Basketball Program uh -huh. many years ago. And one of the big things that he does is he works with Parkinson's patients mm -hmm. and boxing to help with their balance, I guess. But he does it, well, maybe three days a week. 
He does it in North Bro and he does it in Holliston, I believe. And uh, so it's really helped these people. So I just feel that Alec has done a lot. Uh, for the past 15 years, <clears throat> excuse me, close to 2,000 runners have towed the start line on the loop road to run the Sharon Timlin Memorial 5K run to cure ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. <clears throat> this is a horrific and currently incurable progressive neuromuscular disease that robs its victims of the use of their muscles. And if anybody's seen it up close, you understand why people like uh, those on the committee have such passion for it. It's awful to watch. Um, unfortunately, uh, I've seen it up close, and a number of people on the committee have too. So mm -hmm. the, you can see where the energy and the dedication and the passion come from for everybody who's involved in ALS research and raising money. Uh, this is a 100% volunteer committee that oversees the race and Family Fun Day and has raised close to $2 million since the race began. Uh, the committee is extremely dedicated, putting in countless hours raising money and managing a multitude of details to ensure a great day for all, runners and their families, emphasizing the Family Day as well. It's a massive undertaking and it's handled with great care and devotion. Uh, the Timlin race is now an eagerly anticipated event in Hopkinton. Uh, it's very popular in the running community and uh, has become the second most well-known race that starts in Hopkinton. Um, <laughs> What's the other one? Uh, I think it's on the agenda later. I'm not sure, though. Uh, I'm also thrilled to have Dr. Brown here, who changed his schedule uh, because he felt so strongly about uh, the committee uh, led by Abby and her great team, and he said he wanted to be here to say a few words, and Dr. Brown leads the uh, neurology lab at uh, UMass Medical Center, and his lab is a direct beneficiary of, um, of the funds that are raised by the race. So if I can call up Dr. Brown. This is an honor. As you've heard and as you know, ALS is a devastating disorder that takes individuals from vigorous good health to death from respiratory paralysis, typically in three or four or five years. Um, it is called an orphan disease, and we struggle with that because sometimes that makes fundraising difficult. But the reality of the statistics is that more than a half a million Americans now alive today will die from ALS. And I would submit that is not an orphan disease at all. The problem is, and you've just heard it said, we have no good therapy for ALS. And Abby Rosenberg has just had an enormous impact on trying to change that through the work she has done, through the work of her extraordinary committee, the Timlin family, and if I may say, the town of Hopkinton in this race that they have run so successfully. Uh, upwards of $2 million have been raised, and that has all gone toward trying to discover innovative new ways to understand and treat ALS. Only this year, two new types of therapies have been tried, turning off ALS genes as one example of how powerful her fundraising has been. So on behalf of all of us in the laboratory and 20 odd labs that work on this disease, on behalf of all the patients we see in the clinic and their families, uh, I want to say from the bottom of my heart how much we appreciate what Abby has done, what the committee has done, the Timlin family, and the remarkable people of Hopkinton who've made this so successful. Thank you, Abby. Abby? Abby Rosenberg, thank, thank you. You, you, are, you are the heart and soul well, of this organization. It's, it's truly a group effort, and um, a group effort both for the committee and UMass and the Timlin family and the town, with the Board of Selectmen and the schools and all the volunteers, 200-plus um, volunteers that show up every day. And I mean, every day. Every day. <laughs> it feels like every day. <laughs> now, really, and, uh, we've had new people, old people, um, that have come back for 16 years and uh, some that have just joined us this year. So, yeah, thank you. Still to come on HCAM News, Hiller's football Thanksgiving highlights, scenes from the Hopkinton High School production Godspell, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more on the way. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services.
Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hopkinton Hillers and Ashland Clockers football teams took the field this year for their 95th meeting on Thanksgiving. Hopkinton lost to Ashland during the regular season and it was looking for some revenge. Here's what happened. It was an extremely cold morning, but that did not stop Ashland and Hopkinton for meeting up for the 95th time on Thanksgiving. First offensive snap of the game couldn't have gone any better for Ashland. Jackson Hornum connects with Nathan Sickles who takes it to the house for a 70 yard touchdown. The extra point was no good. Score remains 6-0 Ashland. The Hillers respond in the second quarter a 28-yard touchdown from Ryan Kelleher to Brendan Kelly evens up the score. The Brendan Kelly extra point puts the Hillers up by one. In the third quarter, the Hillers strike again with some trickery. Three backs lined up, and he pitches to Deloya, who's going to look to throw back. Wide open, beautiful play, and Ryan Kelleher Ryan Kelleher can throw four touchdowns and he can catch them. The extra point was good and it makes it 14 to six Hillers. The Hillers struck once again in the third quarter. As he fakes the uh, handoff. Oh wow, what a, what a catch. Brendan Kelly again going to the ground. Brendan Kelly makes an insane catch for his second touchdown of the game, and he then kicks another successful extra point to make it 21-6, and that is how the score would stay the rest of the way. The Hopkinton Hillers finish the season with seven wins and four losses overall, while Ashland finishes with eight wins and three losses. Congratulations on a great season to the 2018 Hopkinton Hillers football team. Last weekend, Hopkinton High School Theater put on another wonderful performance. Here's a look at the production entitled Godspell. God rather than you. And while I have life and strength, I shall never cease in the practice and teaching of philosophy. For know that this is the command of God, and I believe that no greater good has ever happened in the state than my service to the God. For I do nothing but go about persuading you all, old and young alike, not to take thought for your persons or your properties, but first and chiefly to take care of the greatest improvement of the soul.
of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, November 30th at 5 p.m., local artists and musicians gather to share their music and poetry on a new open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. And at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat about recent happenings in town on a new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. On Monday, December 3rd at 7.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, December 4th at 6 p.m., the Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, December 5th at 7 p.m., attorney Arthur Bergeron comes back to the Senior Center to talk about qualifying for mass health on a new HCAM TV special. And on Thursday, December 6th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live in HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the 2018 Powder Puff football game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. For the 94th time, the Hopkinton Hillers met up with the Ashland Clockers for Thanksgiving Day football. A new tradition started this year as members of the Ashland and Hopkinton cross country team ran all the way from Ashland High School to David M. Hughes Stadium to deliver the game ball. The first points of the game came in the second quarter. A pitch to Will Abbott and he finds the end zone from a few yards out. The extra point makes it 7 to nothing Hillers. Two minutes, 40 seconds left in the first half. A high snap on the Ashland punt, and Connor Heber makes the tackle for the safety, and the Hillers take the nine to nothing lead into the halftime locker room. Third quarter, 6.57 left. The Hillers turn it over at the three, and Ashland takes advantage of the situation. Lofting pass, oh, oh, number oh. 13. Down the sideline, he's going, he's going to make it all the way. Abbott's got an angle, he's at the 10, and he's not able to get him. That's all the way down for a 97-yard touchdown by number 13, Nathan Sickles. 97 yards on the touchdown reception. Later in the quarter, Ashland punting, and uh-oh, another high snap leads to another safety, and the Hillers go up by four. And that is how the score would stay. The Hillers end their historic 2017 season with a record of 11 and 1 and take the victory by a final of 11 to 7. The 5 and 5 Hopkinton Hillers met up with the 5 and 5 Ashland Clockers for the 92nd Thanksgiving rivalry game. First quarter, Colin Hanrahan gets things started for Ashland as he takes the handoff from about the 25 yard line and plummets ahead for the score. Extra point was good, making it 7-0 Ashland. Hillers threaten to even out the score as Sam Lehman rushes from the 15 and gets inside the five. 
Hillers were pushed back due to penalties, so what does Sam Lehman do? He sets the Hillers up around the one yard line, and then, and he hands off to Lehman. Lehman squirts forward, and he is touchdown. in for a touchdown. On the conversion attempt, Jake Keller takes the quick snap and runs through open field right into the end zone to make it eight to seven Hillers. Second quarter, Colin Hanrahan responds, slipping through tackles and forces himself ahead for 13 yards and to make it 13 points for Ashland. Extra point was good, making it 14 to eight Ashland. Jake Keller responds, firing a 53 yard bomb to Jack Vacari to tie up the game. Hillers kick the extra point and lead 15 to 14. Ashland wasn't going away though. Later in the second quarter, Mitch Porter connects with Max Feinberg to move Ashland up to the 27 yard line. Then a few plays later, Porter with the fake and boom, finds Seamus Reardon in the end zone. Extra point good, clockers up 21 to 15. Ashland would get the ball back once again in the second quarter and Mitch Porter finds Joe Schelling for a 25 yard reception. And then Colin Hanrahan finds the end zone for his third time of the day and makes it 28 to 15 clockers after the extra point. Jake Keller responds as he finds Jack Vacari for the second time in the end zone for the 25 yard touchdown pass. Gonna throw Keller pump fakes, now he throws. He's got a man open, it's Vacari, and he has him for a touchdown! Jack Vacari from 22 yards out and the Hillers answer. The extra point puts the Hillers within six. It was 28-22 clockers at the half. Third quarter was mostly a defensive battle. Jake Keller though, continued his roll and launches a 37 yard touchdown pass right into the arms of Will Abbott. The Hillers got the extra point and take a 29-28 lead. There's a throw to the middle of the field and wide open is Abbott for the touchdown. Later in the third quarter, Joe Kirkak returned the lead to the Clockers as he buried a 27-yard field goal to make it a 31-29 game. About three minutes left to go in the game. The Hillers positioned at the Clockers 23. Jake Keller fires down the left side of the field and right over a defender to Will Abbott, who takes it all the way into the end zone and puts the Hillers up 35-31. to for the middle and he has and it oh! for Abbott. Abbott gets it. He's at the 20, the 10, and he is in for a touchdown. And the Hillers take the lead. Hillers later in the fourth took an intentional safety to set up the kickoff. The Ashland Clockers now on their last play. A swing pass followed by a lateral and then out of bounds and the Hopkinton Hillers take a wild Thanksgiving showdown. 35 to 33. Hopkinton and Ashland met on Thanksgiving morning for the 91st time in the home of the Clockers. Snow fell through the previous night into the morning, making the field a sloppy, wet mess, which meant for a very defensive game. First drive of the game, Pat Ryan eludes a couple of defenders and completes to Hayden Pereira, who was forced out of bounds at around the Ashland 45-yard line. Then a few plays later, Jay Keller at quarterback. Pat Ryan spread to the left. Pat Ryan catches the football. The Ashland defense stepped it up, however. Drew Donahue stuffed here for a loss. Then Jay Keller sacked. The Clockers defense get the job done and keep the game scoreless. On Ashland's possession, quarterback Mitch Porter finds Philip Cooper under pressure and Cooper turns on the Jets and breaks into Hiller's territory. Colin Hanrahan then sets up Ashland nicely within the Hillers 20 yard line heading to the second quarter. Ashland keeps the charge going with this great catch by Max Feinberg. He says he was in bounds and so does the official of first and goal for Ashland. Then a Hopkinton pass interference call sets up this Mitch Porter touchdown to make it a six to nothing game. A Joe Kirkak extra point put the clockers up seven with 816 left in the first half. After the Ashland touchdown, both defenses went back and forth forcing punts. But then in the fourth quarter, Pat Ryan goes to Matt Decina here for the first down. 
And then later in the drive, Pat Ryan connects with Matt Decina for the touchdown. Hillers, an extra point away from tying the game. Problem was, they were still an extra point away from tying. The Hillers said, you know what? It's Thanksgiving. Let's go for the conversion. Ryan takes a snap and throws it incomplete. 6.56 left to go in the game. Ashland up on Hopkinton, 7-6. The Hillers then go for the onside kick, but Ashland scoops it up and has the football with great field position. Ashland moved the chains a couple times, but the Hillers' defense bent but did not break. They forced the turnover on downs. Hillers get the ball at their own 30 with 2.24 left to go in the game.